Okay, looks like we are live. I just don't understand why it is dark. Anyway, good morning, folks. This is Jake Leachko. There's something that is not quite right with this video. It seems to be a little dark. So, but anyway, if uh, if you can see me, uh, if you can see me, then that's good. I I don't know why uh, why this looks a little dim. Well, today is um, already Friday. It is already Friday, August 25, and our gospel for today comes from uh, St. Matthew. Chapter 22, verses 34 to 40. He goes, when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with your whole heart, with your whole soul, and with your whole mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these commandments. So that's the, uh, that's the gospel for, for today. So here is a here is a Pharisee who wanted to uh, test our Lord. Right, this is the whole story. He wanted to test our Lord. Maybe he wanted to see. Well, you see, because the Jews they had plenty of laws, plenty of laws, and uh, and the Pharisees were uh, a stickler for making people obey the law, okay, or obey their many many laws. So <clears throat> perhaps these people were already confused and they wanted to know exactly. What, what are the more important ones among all these hundreds of laws? What are the ones that we are really supposed to pay attention to and prioritize? Right? And Jesus simplifies it for them. Tells them, love God. Love God. That's the number one law. Love God with all your might, with all your soul, with all your heart. And then, love your neighbor the way you love yourself. See? Um, if you love yourself uh, enough to be caring for yourself, then just do the same to your neighbor. And that would have fulfilled most of what the law and the prophets had uh, indicated for us to, to live. But then I would like to dwell here on this idea of love. See? On this idea of love. Um, let, let, let me ask you, let me ask you, who would you, uh, or who would you love more? Your uh, cousins here in Modesto or the cousins in the Philippines? Um, here. Here, your cousins here. North okay. Carolina. Your cousins in North Carolina. Okay. <laughs> who would you love more? Your friends uh, <clears throat> at school or <clears throat> your friends at Taekwondo? China. In China? Yeah. Oh, the friends in China, you love them? Okay. Uh, Taekwondo. Taekwondo. Okay. The big question is why? Why do you love some people more than you would love others? Why? Huh? Well, I don't know the cousins in the Philippines. You don't know the cousins in the Philippines. You never met them, right? Okay. So answer the question, why do you love, why is it that you would love some people more than you would love others? Because you don't know them. Hmm? You don't know them. You don't know who. So who would you love more? The? The people that you know, right? The more you know them, the more you love them. Okay? The more you know them, the more you love them, right? Do you know yourself? Yes. I suppose you know yourself well enough, right? That is why you love yourself. And that's why Jesus said, love others the way you love yourself, right? 
the criteria is if you love yourself enough because you know yourself well at least at least love the others the way you know yourself okay now let's try to analyze a little bit what what this love is all about and maybe it would help us to understand by answering the question in the catechism why did god make us What's God the answer? made me to know, to love, to serve Him, and to be happy with Him in heaven forever. Okay. Yeah. See? So, God made us to know, love, and serve Him. Right? Very Three uh, three very clear indications. To know, love, and serve Him. And as a consequence of knowing, loving, and serving Him, well, to enjoy His everlasting happiness in heaven forever. When we die at the end of our lives on earth. Right? So could you imagine that? God tells us in this gospel today, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, right? With all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. And then we, understand, we realize from that question in the catechism that loving is the purpose of our life. Loving is the purpose of our life. To know, love, and serve. So you tie these two things together, the commandment of the law, the most important expectation of the law and the prophets, the most important expectation of God for us is to love, to love him and to love others. Because that way we can serve others. You cannot serve anybody you do not love, right? And if you know, love and serve, God and others, then your reward will be heaven. Your reward will be great in heaven. Yes, Shiva. Yeah, I see. Okay. Now, but, 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 there is a prerequisite. There is another element in loving. And I think here is where many, many of us um, uh, 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 tend to be deficient in. How can you love somebody? Why do you love your cousins here more than your cousins there? Why do you love your friends here more than you love your friends there? And you answered me and said, well, because we know them more. We love those whom we know more. Right? Well, that is exactly the secret also with loving God. When God tells us here that you have to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, really, the prerequisite to loving God is to know God more. Because you cannot love anybody you do not know. See? You cannot love a person you do not know. And that is why love uh, for our knowledge is a prerequisite of loving and the more you know a person, the more you love that person. The more you know a person, the more you love a person. So the question to ask ourselves maybe is, how do we know God? How much do we really know God? Enough to be able to say that our love for God is not a mere infatuation. It's not a mere fleeting feeling. You know, because love is not a feeling. Love is the orientation of the will, is a direction of the will towards a good, towards a good that is perceived by the intellect. Okay? And to which, <laughs> this is something very, very, very philosophical. Okay? This, is, this is very philosophical, so you may not understand it very well now, but I, I'm just trying to give you the philosophical basis of why knowledge is important in loving. Okay? Because loving is the ascent of the will. It is the will directing itself to a good that the intellect perceives intellectually. And it presents it to the will. And the will gets attracted to it like magnet is to uh, steel. Okay? That's how love happens. First, there is the understanding of what is good. And then that goodness is what the will remember man is made of uh, intellect and will the will attaches itself to that good 
gets attracted to that good that the intellect first knew. Okay? That's what love is. So if you don't really know the goodness behind a person, in this case, let's just say person, you have not discovered what is so good about this person, you will not love that person. You won't. That's why, for example, in courtship, right? When, when a man and a woman uh, uh, profess their, their love for each other, really, really, uh, uh, that love should be based on knowledge of the other person. Knowledge of the other person. The same thing is true with, you know, courtship. Friendship is all the same. Courtship is nothing else but a deeper form of friendship. So if you don't know the other person, it will be foolish for you to profess any love for that person. You're fooling yourself. You're really just getting attracted to certain trimmings, to certain external features, to certain uh, nice things about that person. But you can, you, you're not really loving that person. Okay? You're not really loving that person. And, and the same thing is true with God. The same thing can happen with God. We, we might think, oh, I like this about God. Oh, I like that. About, oh, I like this. Oh, I'm attracted to this or that. But you're not really loving God if you do not really know God. Okay? So knowledge of God is a very important prerequisite of loving God really intimately. Now, how do we know God? How would we know God? Well, we have a very uh, a few tips of how we can do that. First, learn your catechism. The catechism of the Catholic faith, which is one best practice, one of the best practices of, of, of a Catholic is to learn the catechism. The catechism is the best introduction to who God is, what God wants from our lives, and how we're going to conduct ourselves in accordance with the will of God as a Catholic. Learn your catechism. Okay? And then from there you go, you go and, and, and uh, extend your, your knowledge and learning of God uh, in many other ways, you know. Um, some people uh, um, uh, enroll in certain studies, you know, in the, the science of uh, knowing God, you know, from philosophy to theology. And you can learn from the saints. You can read books. You can put plenty of spiritual reading books you can avail of and, and to understand a little bit more about God and learn more about God. Okay? Uh, reading the Bible as we do here every day is, of course, another way of knowing more about God and what God wants from our lives. Okay? Number two, how else do you grow in friendship and knowledge of God? Number two is communicate with God. The same way that you communicate with your friends, right? That's how you get to know more about your friends. You engage them in communication. You get to uh, exchange your, your experiences. You get to talk more uh, with each other so that you can deepen in, in your personal intimacy with your, with your friends. Same thing is true with God. And how do we achieve that uh, with God? Communication, how do we achieve that? Well, through prayer. Through prayer. See? Through prayer. That is why we go to Mass. That is why we uh, uh, do plenty of prayers during the day from the angels to the rosary to the morning prayer to the evening prayer. Plenty of prayer time. That's why we spend a few minutes every day at the Adoration Chapel. Right? So that we can have a close encounter, so to speak, with God and we can talk to Him intimately. There, face to face. God bless you. Whoa, God bless you. Right? And that is communication. The communication is essential in getting to know the person you want to love. Okay? Okay? So, uh, these are the ways by which we can, uh, we can grow in greater knowledge of God. Now, now uh, some people would say perhaps, well, you know, but God is God. He's immense. He's, uh, you know, he is uh, not really completely knowable, you know. It's, uh, we cannot know things about God. Well, 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 well yes, well, well, that is true because we have minuscule brains, you know. Our intellect is very limited. Well, God is so magnificent. God is so awesome. God is great. Uh, we cannot know everything really about God. But, but he has revealed enough to us about himself. See, when Jesus Christ came to earth, that was his mission, 
to introduce us to God the Father, to introduce us to the Trinity and the life of the Trinitarian God. Okay? He came on earth in order to help us understand that our God is a personal God, that God is our Father. Okay? So we know enough already that Jesus Christ has revealed to us. And that, that is what we have to try to know more about. Because that would have been enough if we just learn a little bit more every day about this God that Jesus has revealed to us, then we are doing pretty good already in that area of knowing God. See? There's enough for us to be able to chew on, so to speak, about this knowing God. So, But we have to put the effort. We have to put the effort into studying God. And that is why here, in our own family, this is what we do. You see, we do this gospel commentary so that we understand a little bit more about the Word of God from the Gospels, and we try to apply it in our lives. Right? The other way by which we, uh, we study God, at least here in our own family, is by... The, huh? The catechism. Yeah, see? So every noontime, you know, after lunch, after lunch, everybody picks up their catechism book and... We do it, a very, do it a very simple way. We have a very simple method. And that is memorize. Just memorize one point of the catechism per day. That's what we do. One point of the catechism every day. Just memorize it. Memorize it. Memorize it. Sometimes we don't understand what it tells us. But never mind. Doesn't matter. That's not uh, completely important. Uh, we, we can uh, devote a little bit more time later into going deeper into what the Catechism tells us. But if we don't even have anything to understand by way of memorizing something, then we don't know anything. All the more are we in the dark, right? So let's start by memorizing the Catechism. And that is a very uh, important manner of knowing uh, more about our faith, more about God. And this is something we got to do seriously. We have to devote plenty of real serious effort in getting to know God. If we profess any amount of love for God, it better be based on real knowledge of God rather than just an infatuation of God. Because an infatuation of God or of anybody or anything else will not last. Will not last. It's not going to last. It's not going to lead to real faith. See? But knowledge, real knowledge of God is what will help us to really love God and love our neighbor in Jesus Christ. You see, uh, uh, when we love our neighbor, we love our neighbor because of our love for God. See, it is a consequence of our love for God that we are able to love a neighbor even if that neighbor is unknown to us at any level of, of, of intimacy at all. See? We are able to love our neighbor because of our love for God. And so we're able to fulfill what Jesus tells, uh, tells us in the gospel, right? Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, yes, because we love God. The real love for neighbor stems from real love for God. That's it for us, folks, today uh, on a Friday. I hope you have a good weekend. Uh, we're heading off to Mass. Tomorrow is Confession Day for us. So, um, you know, uh, hopefully we'll be able to insert a few minutes here doing a, doing a commentary before Confession. But, um, you know, I hope you all have a good Friday and have a good weekend ahead of you. We'll see you next time. Don't Bye. Bye.